Okay, hello, gentlemen, and uh, any ladies who are also tuning in. Uh, today we're going to look at the uncertainty of digital measurements. This is uh, related to topic 1.2, kind of be a subtopic, I su suppose. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to show you a method that I've kind of put together, uh, and I think you will find it helpful. So, the learning objectives for this video, or perhaps teaching objectives, would be more appropriate. Um, one, we need to recognize that the actual uncertainty of many digital measurements is greater than the absolute uncertainty of the device, and we will discuss what that means uh, shortly. Next, we need to describe and execute a method to quantify the uncertainty of a digital, a digital measurement. Okay, so that's it. Here is the setup. We are going to be using Logger Pro and two digital sensors. Uh, they are a current probe and a voltage probe. We will also be uh, using Excel to record our data. So here is the circuit and I would like you to construct it right now. So just go ahead and build that. I will wait. Okay, I am of course kidding. This is why we use circuit diagrams. Uh, this is a mess, and uh, it's pulling data perfectly. It works, the circuit is built, constructed, but it is uh, indecipherable. This is decipherable, it's very easy to see what's going on. Okay, so back to our main topic at, at hand, let's discuss the main problem with digital uncertainty. Uh, a lot of the time when you're using a digital measuring device, you will find that you have random uncertainty. And you should recall that random uncertainty is a fluctuation in the measurement due to uncontrolled background interference. Uh, any number of things can cause this. You may or may not know what they are, but you should try to guess uh, what is happening, okay? So let's switch to Logger Pro and have a look right now. Let me open up a new window. Okay, so uh, here I have the potential difference. The voltage probe is kicking me this information and I have the current probe right here giving me the current and uh, volts and amps respectively. Okay, so you can see the problem right away. This fluctuation is occurring in both potential difference and current, although the current seems a little steadier. Uh, but if you're trying to take a measurement right now, this is problematic. You don't know which number to use. And there's no way that you really could just by looking at it. You, you could make a guess, but does that seem like a good way to do science? Is that a satisfying methodology for data collection? The answer is, of course, no, it's not. We don't guess in science, we quantify. It's a key skill. Okay, so how are we going to quantify this? Uh, actually, let me get to that in a second. I want you to pause the video just for a moment and consider some of the sources of this fluctuation. What's going on here? Why do we have different potential differences? Why do we have different currents? Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Think about it. I'll wait. Okay, I've waited and you have considered some reasons. I'm going to throw some of my own suspicions out there. Um, first, we could have a problem with the power supply itself. Okay, so the power supply may have some small electrical issue. Uh, it's not necessarily a problem. I guess that's not even the right way to talk about it, but uh, just the circuit itself may be kicking off um, some background fluctuation or interference. Uh, the second thing it could be is the source of power for the power supply, and that would be the outlet, right? Um, outlet, outlets uh, are generally considered very dirty uh, power sources from an electrical engineering standpoint. In other words, there's a lot of noise um, on our plugs, our plug-in power supplies. Okay, uh, another possibility would be electromagnetic interference. Um, from radio waves or 
uh, other microwaves or other electromagnetic si signals uh, in the atmosphere. So, some possibilities. Do we know which of them for sure is causing this? No. No, we don't. Okay, I have digressed. Let's get back to um, digital uncertainty. So, first thing we're going to do is set up our measurements. Uh, so, talking about data collection, the duration here is going to be completely arbitrary. I'm just going to set it for 10 seconds because it's a reasonable amount of time. Uh, you might, when you're originally trying this, set it for longer just to see if anything interesting happens, but there probably won't be. So 10 seconds should be enough for right now. Again, you could play around with it when you're setting up the experiment initially. Next, our sampling rate should be as large as possible without uh, destroying my computer's CPU. You can see performance may suffer when collecting 10,000 samples per second. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. So I'm gonna turn that down to 1,000 samples per second, which uh, my computer should be able to handle. No problem, but which is still quite a lot of samples inside 10 seconds. Um, that's going to be 10,000 samples, right? Okay, uh, so here we go, click done. And now we are ready to collect data. And get ready for the excitement, guys. It's gonna be incredible. Oh, wow. So, so cool. Yeah. Okay, straight line. Uh, well, a uh, straight line is actually a little disappointing, isn't it? Well, I'm going to show you something cool. So uh, click on the window that you want to play with. We're going to play with potential difference first. And this button is very handy. Make a note. It is the auto scale button. So when I click that, my straight line is going to turn into a very not straight line. And if I wanted to, I could, uh, uh, don't do that. Uh, if I wanted to, I can zoom in on this data a little bit more closely and that's always fun. And you, what you can see here is we have lots of spikes going on. Uh, I want to stay focused here so I'm not going to get into what that might mean. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so first thing I'm going to do here for potential difference is just select all of my data and now we're going to get into the actual data collection, the data recording phase here. I need to go to the Analyze tab, and from here I will go Statistics. So go ahead and click that. And uh, a little bit of my data is cut off here, so I'm just going to move that over slightly. And now I have all of my data, and my Statistics window here will now cover all of the data. So just to repeat that, we can do the same thing down here with my current graph. I will go Auto Scale, and uh, go to analyze, go to statistics, and oops, uh, it's only collected a tiny bit of my data, so I need to pull these brackets apart uh, so I have my entire data set in my statistics analysis. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, what do we do with this information? I've got an extra window there. Okay, what do we do with this information? Well, let's take a look. Um, first, we have the minimum and maximum. And you may recall from your reading or possibly another lecture that if I were looking at procedural uncertainty, this is what I would use to calculate that, isn't it? Uh, we also have here a mean and a medium, and this is very useful information. This mean is probably going to be the best, the best value to enter uh, for this particular measurement. Okay, so why don't we do that now? So my mean uh, for that one was 2.043, correct? Yes. Okay, the next thing I have here is a standard deviation, which in physics we don't actually use as a measure of uncertainty. What we are going to use is uh, the procedural difference. So you could calculate the difference between the minimum and maximum, or you could just take this delta y value here, and that's what I'm going to use. 
Uh, sorry, we're looking at potential difference. Two, not right. There we go. And my delta V value there is 0 0.039, 0 0.039 volts. And my uncertainty is just going to be equal to this divided by two. And that's it, we're done, right? No, we are not done because uncertainty, uh, you will hopefully also recall from your reading or from uh, my lecture previously, uh, uncertainty always has one decimal place, one significant figure, uh, not decimal place, one sig fig. So we need to dial that back to this value. And there is our uncertainty, okay? So now, when we're finally writing this particular measurement, what we're actually going to have is 2.024 uh, sorry, 2.04 uh, plus or minus 0 0.02. I need a plus minus symbol. Let's see if I can find one. There it is. Okay, so my final measurement is going to look like. Okay, and the, uh, the unit here, of course, would be volts, which we generally do not. So anyway, uh, in a table, you would just include this stuff. Okay, so uh, after you collect all of your data, what I would recommend is that you average your averages, uh, which might seem kind of silly, but that's the way we collect multiple trials. So average your averages, and then I think it would be okay probably to average your uncertainty as well. Okay, and that would be the final uh, result that you would end up putting in your chart. Okay, hopefully that is all very clear and will help you to quantify this annoying fluctuating that you get from digital measurements. I have been working on this video for quite a while. Uh, I may post a follow-up to it at a later date, but right now we're just going to call it good. Okay, have a great day, guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye.